Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and now on Vero at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Today, we're not just going to talk about the Shazam test screening. I'm going to explain to you what a test screening is because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So we'll discuss that. And the second part of today's show, we will discuss how I believe the Flash movie is the Flash, or really the DCEU end game. The, the ending of one chapter and the beginning of another. Very exciting. So let's get started. So there has been another test screening for Shazam. There was one for Black Adam a few weeks ago where we were told the action was good. You see, the kind of hint there is, well, the action's good, but nothing else is. But the thing is, right, this is from the say-so of three people. You know, they may have shown an hour, 90 minutes worth of the film. It's only a two-hour movie. Maybe they saw the whole movie or what they wanted them to see thus far. They're not asking you to go down there with your popcorn and see a finished movie. They're letting you see certain elements so you can give them kind of your feedback so they know whether they need to go back and cut out certain elements of what they've done and put other elements into it. They would have been very pleased with Black Adam that people like the action, but you're not seeing a full picture. You're not seeing the real color palette. You're not maybe getting the music, all the VFX. It's not completed. So people who give reviews of test screenings and start saying this, that or the other, uh, uh, you know, it's not giving you a full picture. And this is the problem with being on the Internet as well. So there has been some feedback from the recent Shazam Fury of the Gods uh, test screening. And what they've basically said is it's not as good as Black Adam and it's not as good as the first Shazam. Right. But we do know from these test screenings that Wonder Woman is in one scene. What we don't know is how long the scene is and what happens in the scene. Now, it's my it's my theory that actually in the test screening, in this scene with Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, she she basically is there for Rachel Ziegler's character. I think the reason they won't tell us who she's going to play is because she will end up being taken on by Wonder Woman. Maybe she'll go to Femascura, Fantasy Island or something like that. I believe that Rachel Ziegler has a big future within this universe, within the new, the new era of the DC Extended Universe. So with the actor that they've cast to play Blue Beetle, with Rachel Ziegler um, and Batgirl as well, Leslie Grace, we're getting a younger cast. This cast will appeal, appeal to a younger audience. This is the whole idea. So this is great from um, Walter Hamada and Anne Sarnoff. They're, they're doing things the right way. These young actors, as I say, will appeal to the mainstream younger audience. And this is exactly what we want, my friends. So basically, you can't listen to people saying Shazam Fury of the Gods isn't as good as the first one because they're basing their opinions on a little bit of a movie that they've seen that isn't the finished article. It's like me moulding the clay and saying, well, here's the half the job done. And you say, oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't as good as your first efforts. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's very, very difficult to garner these reactions. And it does make me laugh when some of these people say, oh, I knew Wonder Woman was in it. I've known since last spring, but I didn't say anything. It's like you knew jack shit. And, you know, I mean, I wish people didn't come and tell me stuff that other people don't know. It ruins the experience, but I don't even go looking for it. People just send me messages all the time. Mick, this is happening. That test screen is going to happen. This person is going to be in this movie. So I know a lot of things. I knew for ages. I knew about three months after Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield we're going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. I even knew the title of the film months before it was even announced. These things come to me. And it's not like these studios are coming to me. It's second and third hand knowledge. And sometimes you don't even know if it's true. But in terms of reactions about test screening, be very, very careful. 
that just because someone is coming out of a test screening saying, oh, it's not a very good movie, they're telling you that of something that's not even completed. And it's not a, not, not a fair thing to do. I've seen my fair share of test screenings. For example, do you remember I saw Wonder Woman 84? I came out of the test screening and I said, wow, this movie's going to be this, that and the other. And I was really excited. When I saw the actual movie, it wasn't really... A complete picture of what I saw. I saw half the picture, liked what I saw. I didn't even see the return of Steve Trevor. Steve Trevor wasn't even in the test screening. And so I didn't know what they were going to do with him the way they did the Quantum Leap vibe thing with him. And, you know, Diana having sex with someone else who Steve's jumped into. I didn't know any of that, you see. And I didn't know the lack of action that was going to be in the movie as well. So test screenings are not a gauge of what a movie is going to be. They're not allowing you to see it so you can have a good time in the afternoon. And I, when I kind of saw a video, I think it was Ping Pong Flicks talking about the Shazam Fury of the Gods, you know, test screening, and he was talking about two or three people's feedbacks. It, that's all very well. And I think this is the problem when someone has a channel that just relays the news rather than opinions of the news. That's what, This channel isn't just here to tell you the facts and then see you later. I'm here to tell you what's going on and to give you my take. My take is no more important than your take. That's not the point. It's not that my take's more important. It's just that I have the confidence to sit here in front of a camera on a tablet and just be vain and love the sound of my own voice. That's it. So I'm no more important. My views are no more, you know, elite or superior to yours or anybody else's. All I'm doing is it is just telling you uh, what I think about the situation. So, I'm still excited for Black Adam and Shazam Fury of the Gods. It isn't a problem to me. And, you know, these, this feedback that we're getting that the action was okay, good in Black Adam and Shazam Fury of the Gods isn't as good as Black Adam or isn't as good as the first Shazam. You know, because you could go in there and love the first Shazam, right? But then you see lots of different elements of Shazam Fury of the Gods that it's more action-packed, that it's more compelling, maybe a little bit more serious, and maybe people don't like the fact that there's less humour in this film. So they're telling you it's not as good as the first one. So you've got to be very, very careful what information and opinions you take on. As far as I'm concerned, I think that Fury of the Gods and Black Adam are going to be great movies. But listen, they're not just they're not Zack Snyder's Justice League level movies they're not supposed to be these are around two hour movies so at the end of the day they will be epic they will be great but they're not up there it's like Hawkeye it's not the best entry to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we've ever seen but it does its job and you move on and that's what Shazam Fury of the Gods is supposed to do now Black Adam is supposed to be a lot more epic than that and I'm really looking forward to it but I'm looking forward to both of these movies you know Shazam Fury of the Gods is a stepping stone movie you watch it and you go on to the next one this is what's happening with the DC Extended Universe now if you want to see something a little bit more epic that's why you're getting an Earth 2 with um, Matt Reeves the Batman an absolutely different movie. I'm quite sure that the Batman will, you know, will have people more excited than Black Adam and Shazam Fury of the Gods put together. And that's okay. That's that's what's supposed to happen. Not everything can be the best movie ever. Black Widow is nowhere near the best movie ever. Nor is Shang-Chi, nor is Eternals. But they do the job and then they move on to the next chapter. And this is the kind of game we've got to learn to play in the DC Extended Universe fandom, or we're never going to get anywhere with this franchise. So that's the test screening for Shazam! Fury of the Gods. There wasn't really much information apart from the fact that we know Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman's going to be in it. And I think the main reason she's going to be in it, and apparently the reaction to her appearance is, it's a very important scene. And as I said earlier, I think it's all to do with Rachel Ziegler's character. That's when she's revealed who she is, and she will go off with Wonder Woman. So it's just great that Gal's Wonder Woman's going to be involved, and we're getting a more interconnected universe. I was thinking about this yesterday, and it's definitely true, isn't it? We are getting the DCEU endgame in this Flash movie. 
it's the ending of, if you like, phase one of the DCEU, a much maligned face, phase. You know, obviously it's like your like a series of your, of your favorite television seri series and it's got a season that's not very good. You can kind of look at this first phase of the DCEU like that, where you've got these really good movies, as we discussed the other day, but it's not a great interconnected franchise, but there are a lot of great movies in the DCEU phase one. Man of Steel, BVS, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Shazam, Aquaman, right? Really good movies. There's probably only like two really underwhelming movies in the entire first phase of the DC Extended Universe franchise. So say what you like about the DC Extended Universe as a franchise itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Just choking. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. But, yeah, so as a franchise, it's not great. But as a set of films, apart from a couple, really, really good. So in terms of financial, it's not record-breaking, the DC Extended Universe. Let's just call it phase one for the hell of it. But as I say, really, really good movies, most of them. And I think they can be proud of themselves, at least, for the type of movies um, that they've made, mostly. So... Basically, the Flash movie is going to be the end of DCEU Phase 1 and the beginning of the next phase. That's where I see it going. And for me, that's really, really exciting to see the Flash movie finish off Phase 1 of the DCEU in the right way. Finish it off, clean it up and move on to the next chapter. And the next chapter is Batgirl. It is a uh, Blue Beetle. It is... Um, other films that are coming as well. We don't really know what's coming up in 2023, apart from officially Fury of the Gods, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and Batgirl. No, let me say that again. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and Blue Beetle. And to be quite honest with you, I don't know where, where Batgirl's coming. Uh, I thought she was meant to, the, the, the movie was meant to be released in 2022, but maybe it's going to be released alongside Blue Beetle in 2023 so that be, be, would be a third movie at the moment on hbo max but i'm kind of certain that it's not going to remain on hbo max it wouldn't surprise me if they announced that it's moving from hbo max the batgirl movie and going into movie theaters alongside fury of the gods blue beetle in movie theaters that would be for, as i say free movies in movie theaters um in 2023 but i think there might be at least space for one more or maybe even five movies in 2023 which they could easily do i i don't care if there's no dc movies on hbo max i don't even have access to hbo max i'd rather see them in the movie theater that's why i want to see four or five dc extended universe movies a year so very very exciting so we we're, we're finished we're, we're finishing one chapter of the dceu off and we're kind of beginning another. So how they do this, of course, is much maligned. And we're hearing so many different things right now. And we don't really know many certainties apart from the slate that's been announced thus far. But I think I do have a pretty idea, a good idea, what they're doing with this. For example, we now know that Michael Keaton's Batman is going to be in Batgirl. So a lot of people are making the assumption that Batfleck finishes off in the Flash movie and we never see him again. The truth is, we simply don't know. We don't know enough information to make that assumption. So it could be that situation, excuse me, <clears throat> it could be that situation, but Ben Affleck could easily be in Batgirl alongside Michael Keaton. What is Michael Keaton's role in the DC Extended Universe after Flash? We know he's in Batgirl now. Is he this kind of Nick Fury, Batman, older Bruce Wayne that pops up? If Batfleck is done, let's say Batfleck is done for argument's sake. I'm not sure. I'm not convinced and I'm not sure. No, I'm not living in denial. I'm just not sure right now. Really, unless we're told that, or we actually see it, when we see the Flash movie, we can't be sure of anything. I think Batgirl was always going to be a Batgirl Beyond movie. Instead of Batman Beyond, we're going to get Batgirl Beyond. But of course, you would think it could still be called Batman Beyond, because the whole idea is Beyond Batman, right? 
So the whole idea in the comics is that there's a Batman Beyond. This guy, I think Roy, a young guy, is trained to be the next Batman in the future. Now, it doesn't look like that the Batgirl movie is set in the future. And so it's kind of... Because J.K. Simmons is in this movie. So you can't get a J.K. Simmons of the future, right? Unless when Barry Allen comes back, Flashpoint is so fucked up that now the DCEU is just moved so far in the future and J.K. Simmons, for some flashpoint e multiverse reason, is a lot more further in the future. And the DCEU Phase 1 is in the past. They could do that, but I doubt they would. So Grace Randolph actually hinted ages ago that Batgirl would be a kind of Batman Beyond kind of story. So it could be feasible that Keaton will be kind of Bruce Wayne more than Batman in the DCEU and Leslie Grace's Barbara Gordon will be the kind of bats of the of, of Earth One's DC Extended Universe. It could, there, there may not be any other Batman because they've already got a Batman in Earth Two with Robert Pattinson and they've got this female Batgirl who's the main Bat version of Bats in, in, in this franchise. But of course, they could be setting the, up the Bat family in the DCEU Earth One. So there's so many, there's more questions than answers basically, isn't there? We do not know who Batman's going to be in um, Earth 1 of the DC Extended Universe after Flashpoint. Is Michael Keaton now the main Batman? And Leslie Grace will be the Batgirl. She'll be the younger one who does all the fighting and things like that. And Keaton's basically going to be the mentor. That's what it looks like. And it was always going to be that way. Batgirl was always going to be a Batman Beyond vehicle, using Batgirl to be that kind of Roy character that gets trained up to be the next Bats. And I think it's a pretty solid idea. Everyone loves Batgirl. Everyone has always wanted to see a Batgirl movie. So I think people can be happy about that. So it does, from the outside looking in, unless things change at this moment in time, and it does keep on changing, and I don't think it's definite, but at the moment, the way it looks like, it looks like that Affleck will be done after Flash and Keaton will be this kind of Nick Fury kind of cameo person who kind of inspires people. And I think he's definitely going to train and inspire Leslie Grace's Batgirl. So I do expect and do expect Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne Batman to play a huge role and get lots of screen time in the Batgirl movie. So I think that's what we're looking at. And then there's another question, Mark, that we don't know about. And it's, again, a similar situation to Batgirl, you know, where it seems like Batgirl is going to be the main bats of the DCEU. What about Sasha Calais Supergirl? Is she a replacement for Henry Cavill Superman? Does she have a future? There's actually no evidence that she's anything but a Flashpoint Supergirl at the moment. If she's a Flashpoint Supergirl, she could just stay and vanish when Barry sets, resets everything. But because this is Flashpoint, and once you mess with things, they may stay changed. When Barry resets Earth-1, Sasha Calais may be the proper Supergirl in the new Earth-1 without a Superman there. You know, I think that it's more likely than not that that could be the case, just like Leslie Grace being the main bats in the DCEU Earth-1. That's what it looks like. You could get a situation like that where Sasha Calais Supergirl could be the main soups in this franchise. But again, we don't know that for sure. Could it be that Henry Cavill is replaced by Sasha Calais? Maybe he's replaced by Brandon Ralph. Maybe. He's there. It's an option. He could be the new kind of Superman like in a similar role, in a way, to what's going on with Michael Keaton's relationship with Batgirl being a mentor. You know, Brandon Ralph, who is a lot younger, obviously, than Michael Keaton, could be a replacement for Cavill and could be a mentor for Sasha Calais' Supergirl. And we don't know anything for sure, but it does look like that Sasha is a Flashpoint Supergirl. I'm fine with that. Again, it's swapping a female for a male. That's what they want to do. This is where we are now. Um, I'm comfortable with it, especially if we got Brandon Ralph. Of course, the replacement of replacing Henry Cavill is very toxic and very unfortunate. 
These may be things we have to live with. And this is the problem, I suppose, because as excited as I am for the Flash, when you kind of know that Keaton's replacing Affleck, maybe, and then Brandon Ralph potentially could replace a Henry Cavill Superman or someone could replace him if he's not in the movie or two at all, or if he gets deleted. These are questions we don't know, we won't know. And I think that there's a big difference. If... Cavill's in the Flash movie like Affleck is, at least we can celebrate that fact. But again, we're going to be worried who stays and who goes. So, look, anything's possible right now. Nobody knows shit. You could be, you could be having Cavill doing interviews for the Witcher series too, saying uh, the cake's in the closet and he's still waiting for the phone call, knowing full well that he's actually shot scenes for the Flash movie. That's the situation right now. Actors lie because they're under, a, you know... A DNR or whatever it is, right? Whatever it's bloody called, right? So they can't, you know, tell you what's going on. So I think The Flash is one of the biggest mysterious movies I've ever kind of spoke about or kind of known is coming. Spider-Man No Way Home was very transparent. Disney and Sony were clever, kind of leaking it out who was going to be in the movie, but denying it at the same time. Well, Warner Brothers have revealed certain things like Sasha Calais, Michael Keaton, so it's something for us to get our teeth into, but they haven't revealed much else. So the rest of the appearances, and there are going to be huge DC characters from the past, present and future in this movie. We've already been told that by Barbara Machete. There are a lot of DC characters in this movie. So, you know, and this is what it is. It's the ending of one thing and the beginning of another. Get this right, and they could set up something really, really exciting. But they have to get it right. That's the thing here. And nobody knows if they're capable of getting this right. I know very little about Andy Machete, apart from, you know, the two It movies he's done. Um, Christina Hodgson's been hit and miss with her career as well. We simply don't know if this is going to work or not. But be absolutely clear about this. It has to work. It's like rolling a dice and hoping you get a six, but we just don't know. So to reiterate what I think is going on is I believe we are doing Batman Beyond with Batgirl so, and Michael Keaton training her. And I think we could be getting a similar thing with Sasha Calais Supergirl, where she is Flashpoint Supergirl and not related to another Superman. Of course, I could be wrong now. We'll have to wait and see. She could be Flashpoint Supergirl, but still be related to another Superman. I just... Don't know, but she could be the main soups in the DCEU, like most probably Leslie Grace's Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, is going to be or not. Again, that's very interesting because they're going down a young, youthful kind of kind of exterior in terms of Sasha Calais, um, Leslie Grace, the lad whose name escapes me, who's playing Blue Beetle. So that's three people. And then you've got... Rachel Ziegler, that's four young people. Actually, I think that's four young Latino actors that can be introduced to the DCEU. That's great, by the way. That's great. And young people will be attracted to the DCEU. If they're introduced, these young people, in the right way, these young superheroes with so much potential. And with that said, could we be getting a young justice? I did say a couple of weeks ago, I'm pretty sure we are. Because something's going on, so they could be setting up a young Justice League as well as a future kind of adult Justice League as well. So I do think that Anne Sarnoff and Walter Hamada have been working quietly behind the scenes to do these exciting things. And I'm excited for these things. What happened in the DCEU has happened. I can't go back. I can't fix it for you. I can't restore the Snyderverse for you. I hope it is restored in a parallel universe. But right now, we are where we are. So if we, we at least can build something new and special and exciting, I'll be very, very happy for that. At least for the time being. This has been the DCEU Daily. I admit your husband the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more... DCEU Daily. Until then, au revoir, goodbye, Alfie the same.